This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. This is the second lecture on Chapter 4 of the free lecture notes, which is uh, the management of inventory. Um, and we've looked at the economic order quantity, uh, and we found out in uh, the last lecture, in Example 2, that the best, the economic order quantity was 800 units. That was the order quantity that minimized the total inventory costs over the year, uh, and they were minimized at a total of 2,000. And we'd ignored the, um, how much we were paying for our 40,000 units on the basis that it would be $25 over the year per unit, however many you were ordering each time. However, I did say it could make it a bit more fun with what we call quantity discounts. So look at example three, if you would. For the information given in example one, so the example we did in the last lecture, the supplier now offers us discounts on purchase price as follows. And it depends on the quantity we order each time. So if we order between zero up to a 5,000 units, we get no discount. But if we're prepared to order from 5,000 and less than 10,000 each time, they'll give us a discount of 1% on the purchase price. And if we're prepared to order 10,000 or more each time, we'll get a 1.5% discount on the purchase price. Now, we already know that 800 units will give the minimum inventory costs. If we order bigger quantities each time, the inventory costs of over the year are bound to be higher. Think back to the graph, Andrew. But it could be worth paying higher inventory costs if, because of the discount, the cost of buying the 40,000 units over the year was lower. And so, there's no quick way here, as you'll see, there's no more formulae. Um, we've just got to cost out. And what are the choices? Well, we know the economic order quantity was 800. And if we order 800 units each time, we already know the inventory costs... In total, were 2,000. And we know that at any other level, that total will be higher. But we now need to also consider the purchase cost over the year. Remember, we're buying 40,000 units a year. And if we order 800, there's no discount. We'll pay the full $25 a unit which is how much? One million. And so the two together, one million and two thousand. We then say, well, what about this first level of discount of 1%? To get a 1% discount, we'd have to order at least 5,000 each time. And so let's try ordering 5,000 and see what the total cost will be then. Again, the inventory costs will be higher, but of course the total purchase cost will be lower. Let's see if it's better or worse. So normal costing, but just watch one little thing. As I go through, first of all, the inventory costs. We've done this enough times, so it should be getting pretty automatic. The reorder cost. 40,000 units a year. If we order 5,000 each time, we'll need eight orders. And the cost of uh, placing each order 
was twenty dollars, so a total of one sixty. The holding cost. We're ordering five thousand each time, so the average inventory will be two thousand five hundred. But be careful here. The cost of holding one unit, if you remember, was 10% of purchase price. But the purchase price is no longer $25. It's 1% less. So the purchase price will only be 99% of $25. Now I know it's only a tiny bit different, but even so, we should do it correctly. Purchase, because of the discount, purchase price is only 99% of 25. Yeah, there's a 1% discount. So what will be the total holding cost? Uh, per unit, 10%, 99%, 25%. Per unit, it's now 2.475 instead of 250. 2,500 units. I get 6,188. So the total inventory costs will be 6,348. Which, of course, is higher, a lot higher than before. It was only 2,000. Now it's 6,348. But the total purchase cost will be lower. We still need 40,000 units over the year. But instead of uh, paying 25 a unit, again, a 1% discount the cost per unit will be slightly lower. So what will the total be? I think my arithmetic's right. I get 990,000. Now you could set out your workings differently. That doesn't matter. But although the uh, inventory costs have gone up a lot from 2000 to 6348, the total purchase price has gone down a lot from 1 million down to 990,000. And so the total of the two, 996348, it would be better to order 5,000 units. The discount is bigger than the extra inventory costs. Um, what about other levels, though? Why didn't I try 3,000 units? Well, that'd be silly, surely, because 3,000 units, remember the, the, the economic order quantity was 800 each time, order 3,000 each time, and the inventory costs are bound to be higher, and there'd be no discount. So it couldn't possibly be cheaper. Why don't I consider 6,000 units? Well, consider 6,000 units, we get no extra discount, and the inventory costs would be higher still. It cannot be cheaper. We only need to consider uh, the economic order quantity and the levels at which we first get a discount. And so for this question, the only other order quantity that could possibly be cheaper would be 10,000 units, because although, again, the inventory costs will be a lot higher, we get a bigger discount, the purchase cost will be lower. So let's try, finally, 10,000 units. The inventory costs... Well, the order costs... If you're ordering a uh, 10,000 each time, oh dear, that's supposed to say 40. We only need to place four orders, and at $20 for each order, that goes down a lot to only 80. The holding cost 
10,000 each time means average inventory throughout the year of 5,000 units. The cost of holding each unit, 10% of purchase price. But again, it's a tiny thing, but we may as well get it right. The purchase price was 25, but with a 1.5% discount, it'll only be 98.5% of 25 per unit. So the holding cost, 5,000 units, 10% of 98.5% of 25. 12,313. So as we expected, the inventory costs are a lot higher, 12,393. But again, it might be worth paying so much more because we're getting a bigger discount. So finally, what happens to the total purchase price? Over the year, we're still buying 40,000. But the cost per unit falls to only 98.5% of 25. So the total purchase cost $985,000. And so, overall, is it going to be better or worse? Inventory costs a lot higher, purchase costs lower, the two together nine nine seven three nine three. And as I explained a few minutes ago, it's only those three levels that are worth considering economic order quantity and the levels at which we first get higher discounts, here 5,000 and 10,000. One of those three has to be the best, and it could be any one of the three. What is it here? 997, 996. It's this one. Uh, which was how many? 5,000 units? 5,000. I'll say it, 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 it could be any one of the three. There's no quick way, there's no choice but to cost out um, each of the three alternatives. Okay, that's it uh, really for um, economic order quantity. If you did pay by F2, You'll know in F2, you were also tested on something called the economic batch quantity, but that isn't tested at F9, it's simply the EOQ. Uh, one tiny thing I'd better mention, just to be safe. Um, sometimes you might see mention of what's called buffer or safety inventory. And all this is, if you think back to um, the beginning of the first lecture, I said that if we ordered ooh, a thousand units each time, inventory, you'd start with a thousand, it'd fall to zero, then back to a thousand, down to zero, back to a thousand, and so on. And the average inventory would be half the order quantity. Well, that's fine, but there is always a danger in real life that if you let the inventory fall to zero before getting the new order, there's always a risk something might go wrong. You know, there might be a delay in the new order being delivered. And what happens if there was a delay in the new order being delivered? You fall to zero. But then if the new order wasn't delivered till a few days later, you've got a few days when you've no inventory. And that could mean turning away customers and losing profit. You know, they may not wait a few days. And so what we might decide to do 
is just to be safe. Let's have an extra, ooh, 100 units all year. And that's what we mean by buffer a safety inventory. It's where we hold extra units in inventory throughout the year. just to be safe. Now it doesn't affect the economic order quantity at all. You know, even if that um, example we've been doing, even if I said, oh, they're carrying safety inventory of 100 units, for the EOQ, it would be completely irrelevant. The only relevant relevance is when doing the costings, And calculating of the holding cost for the year well our EOQ if you remember forget the quantity discounts our EOQ was 800 units uh, and so when we were costing we said oh the average inventory is 400 and what's the cost well if you're holding safety inventory you will add on the holding cost of the safety inventory. The buffer of the safety. So if I um, if I told you they were having safety inventory of 100 units, it's as though there's an extra 100 all year. We'd simply add on 100 units at whatever the holding cost per unit was. OK, that's that. Um, we are going to have one, I'm sorry, uh, inventory. There's likely to be something in every exam, even if it's just one two-mark question. Uh, however, there's one other thing we do need to consider, and so uh, I will have one more lecture on this chapter, uh, where there's no arithmetic involved, but you can be examined you know what we mean by what we call the just-in-time system. So, one more lecture, and then we'll have a crack the chapter.